Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Jason, host of Fighting Words Financial. Today, I'm just going to do a little short video here today on uh, some thoughts that I've been having around an, uh, an, an open source electric vehicle. I think that's coming in the future, and uh, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a live stream later on today, uh, probably not too long, maybe about an hour or so, where I want to hear kind of like new ideas from you folks on where you think that the electric vehicle um, technology is going, right? Not just the market, but the technology is going. So I've been thinking that we've been really limited on the way we're thinking that ownership, development, and manufacturing could be going here in the future. And uh, even even though you know people who watch my channel are, are, are futurists in a lot of ways, because that's a lot of what my channel is about. It's not necessarily just about stocks or financial planning. It's about considering what's going on in the future. I think that we've been limited when it comes to thinking about car ownership, how the idea of car ownership can be disrupted, and what changes that could bring in terms of how cars are made, right? So I'm thinking that an open source vehicle is actually in the future of car manufacturing. So if you think about it, we've only thought about ownership in two different ways right now, which is number one, everything stays the same. You go to a car dealership, bam, you own a car or you lease a car with all of the limitations. Or the new thing that's being considered right now is the subscription model, which is not really all that new. The subscription model was tried before and it failed. That's not to say that it's going to fail right now. Um, a lot of ideas um, are, are tried before their time and they fail, including the electric car. It's been tried many times in the past and failed, but now it's successful. Um, and, you know, I think the best example of this technology, though, is is, uh, is battery swapping. There was a company called Better Place here in California that had operations in Israel and in Denmark that tried battery swapping for a few years. They've dropped off the radar. I don't know if they've declared bankruptcy, but I haven't heard much from them in years. So I'm thinking that they're probably gone now. But this battery swapping strategy is successful for NEO right now in driving sales because it helps to alleviate range anxiety. And I think that it's going to be a part of their strategy for a f at least for a few more years going forward. I don't know that it's a permanent part of their strategy, though. We'll, we'll have to see. But I'm thinking that consumer tastes could actually drive a divergence between the actual hardware for an electric vehicle and the software which if you think about it in the future, the software is probably going to have basically everything that you like about your car. Uh, and the vehicle itself is going to be commoditized. Uh, one of the things that I find kind of fascinating is the idea that most investors in electric vehicles have that everyone needs all of these bells and whistles. Everyone needs an autonomous car. Not everyone's going to need an autonomous car or want an autonomous car. And I'm thinking that a basic vehicle with motors that work, suspension that's that's decent, manufacturing that's decent, it's not all that fancy. I'm thinking a sub $10,000 electric vehicle is probably coming sometime in the near future within the next five five years or so. I think that's going to happen. And I'm not talking about the $4,000 Wuling Mini that's made by GM and SAIC in China. That's four, It's, it's a $4,000 glorified golf cart. I'm thinking a fully functional Toyota Corolla-like vehicle for sub $10,000. I think that's very that's very possible and it's probably coming in our future. But what I wanted to talk about is a sort of separation between hardware and manufacturing and software manufacturing to a degree. I think it might be possible that car manufacturing evolves in a way like uh, cell phone manufacturing did, where um, these proprietary makers like Apple created the cell phone and they created proprietary software. They controlled everything that went on it. Uh, you, you couldn't really maintain it. And there were a lot of limits on creativity, but it also that li the limits on creativity creativity solved a lot of problems and prevented a lot of problems from happening too. There were benefits for that as well. But then Android started to arise. And if you think about it, all of the car manufacturers right now are trying to be the apple of car manufacturing and controlling all of the software that goes into a vehicle. And like I said, I'm thinking that the hardware becomes commoditized and there are very few differences between the hardware, meaning everyone's got great motors, everyone's got great suspension, everyone's got great everything that was already solved by the internal combustion engine revolution that happened 100 years ago and manufacturing improved for the last 100 years. And now most of those problems are, are, are solved for the most part. What I'm thinking though in the future though is that most of what you enjoy all, you know, for your vehicle is gonna live in the software and not necessarily in the hardware. And that's going to be delivered to you in a software as a service manner. And I think it's going to be delivered to you possibly all through your personal communication device, whether that's a cell phone or an implant or whatever comes in the future. I, I'm, 
I got to tell you guys that I like new technologies. I'm not looking forward to the day where someone tries to get me to get an implant. I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, that's maybe a reflection of my age. I don't know if younger people are, are totally into that, but I'm probably not going to. But I'm thinking that all the features that you really love about your vehicle may actually live on your phone in the future, meaning that you'll have all your destinations pre-programmed in, your favorite music programmed in, your environmental settings programmed in, your comfort settings programmed in. But kind of importantly too is um, I do a lot of remote work. What if I could have all of my VPN settings, all of my secure software programmed into my phone where when I walk to my phone, it's preloaded into there. If I'm going on a long, long road trip where I might be stuck in traffic or something like that, the AI can drive for me and I can just do all my work. So I'm thinking of future where you get a car that's basically a shell. It has the cameras on it, has all the hardware that you need, suspension, motors, all that stuff. It's got your basic AI uh, that's open source on there. And all the layered software that comes on top of that actually lives on your phone. Um, and it's produced by a third party company. And you can take that software on your personal device from vehicle to vehicle to vehicle. So it's really the software as a service sold to you and stored on your device that becomes the real profit driver for a lot of these companies, which means that it may not actually be the manufacturer of the hardware itself that's generating the largest margins. It's going to be the people producing software for these vehicles that really cover all the features that you really like about your car. Anyway, these are just some wild, unfocused thoughts. I wanna discuss this on a live stream later on today. So if you guys, I'm gonna jump on uh, YouTube here on a live stream at four o'clock Pacific time today. Uh, if you have, guys haven't checked out my Patreon, my Patreon uh, page, please do that. I'm gonna leave the link below in the description. And I look forward to seeing you guys today at 4 p.m. Uh, you know, and uh, anyway, folks, have a nice Sunday. And if you're available, please come to my live stream at 4 p.m. today. Thank you very much.